That. I just replied all. Oh, no worries at all. I, I've yeah. already got a backup plan in action, so we are okay. good. Awesome. And yeah, this is regular bananas for the next day, so we can yeah. touch base about it. Yeah, no, thank you. Okay. I, mean, I just feel terrible. Because we were talking about ways to make the Friday night work, if you, depending on like what the. Go to your book club. <laughs> thank you. We but can yeah. make it work, but it's, it's no. preferable to. Yeah, we're just going to take off. Yeah. 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 So we're going to get Shabbat Shalom, everyone. We're going to get started in just about two minutes. And I just want to ask a favor of everyone. So if I, I know this is a little unusual to stop. And then, Brendan, you'll just let us know. And I think that was a thumbs up. And so, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> it is wonderful to see all of you here. We say, Hine matov umanayim shevet achim gam yachad. It is so good. It is so good to be here on the Shabbat that even here in Seattle, the sun has come out. <laughs> Please join us in singing Hide Mato.
Shabbat Shalom and Bruchim Habayim, blessings and welcome. It is so wonderful to welcome you here on this Shabbat morning to Temple Beth Am. I am Rabbi Ruth Zlotnick. I am joined by Rabbi Dana Benson, by Rabbi Jason Levine, by Rabbi, De I mean, by our Rabbi, Debbie Mas Maserano. And also, we're so grateful that Taryn and Noah are here bringing such beauty to our prayers and that each member of our um, adult B'nai Mitzvah cohort is here to help us lead, um, and we'll be introducing them as, as they arise. Um, and we're also grateful that each and every one of you is joining us, whether you're online or here um, in the sanctuary with us. This is indeed, as we mentioned um, prior to services, this adult B'nai Mitzvah cohort started almost three years ago now, I believe. Um, and uh, when COVID hit, they had the option to uh, keep their original date and be on Zoom or to make the choice to actually experience becoming B'nai Mitzvah on this sanctuary here. And, uh, and this is how we found ourselves on this particular Shabbat. And I will say that, you know, God works in mysterious ways because in this Torah portion of this Shabbat, it's uh, Parashat Vayishlach, You'll be hearing incredible teachings about it in just a little bit, as well as incredible teachings about our prayers. But in this Torah portion, it's the story of someone who, in the middle of life, went on a journey of transformation, and it wasn't easy. There were tons of challenges and obstacles outside of themselves and within themselves that they wrestled with. But on the other side of this journey, they walk through the world just a little differently and know that they are blessed and that they are also bringing blessing into the world. Of course, the Torah portion is about Jacob, but that could be the story of each and every one of our adult B'nai Mitzvot. I want to uh, hearken to you what incredible role models and teachers they are. It is not easy as adults where we try always to look so confident and competent to the outside world to say, I'm going to start something from the very beginning and be a novice. And then to integrate it into who you are to such an extent that you're able to be here as our teacher this morning. So I want to just say at the outset, this is a very special Shabbat morning because um, my rabbinic colleagues and I will really just be traffic cops doing very little. The work uh, of uh, leading services will be um, uh, held by this extraordinary class of uh, individuals. Um, 
But I would be remiss if I didn't say that um, in addition to the three of us guiding them on this journey, Debbie Maserano has truly been their spirit guide, especially, uh, especially in the learning of Hebrew. In fact, just a little while ago, we were, I, I kid you not, we did a pregame huddle where we took her name in vain. So uh, go, yay, Debbie. Um, so uh, with that said, because Debbie is such a um, wonderful friend and teacher to our community, we've asked her to um, begin our journey of prayer and study this morning with the Nassim B'chal Yom, the uh, blessings of every day. You can find them on page 80. And we take the time now to begin our 100 blessings for the day. Um, I invite you to chant in Hebrew or English, whichever is your preference. We're going to be doing Hebrew. <laughs> Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Natan Lasech Vivina Lehavchin Ben Yom Uvein Laila Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Poke ach ivrim, Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Matir asurim, Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Zokef kefufim, Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Roka ha'aretz al ha'mayim, Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Hamechin mitzade gaver, Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Malbish arumim, Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Hanoten le'ya'ef ko'ach. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Hama'avir shena me'enai, Utnu ma'me af apai. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, She'asani betzelem Elohim. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, She'asani batchorim. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Sha'asani Yisrael, Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Haolam, Ozer Yisrael Bigvura, Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Haolam, Oter Yisrael Betif Ara. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher kitshanu v'mitzvotav, V'tzivanu la'asok b'divrei Torah. And as is our custom here at Temple Beth Am, we take a moment to think of our own bracha, our own blessing we would like to add. I'll give you a moment to think of yours, and we will then join together with the first six words and offer up our blessing. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, who has blessed me with amazing students, some who have become friends and have persevered and persevered and finally made it to this day. Amen. <laughs> Thank you so much, Debbie, for leading us in that beautiful, beautiful blessings that help us start our day, as well as a reminder of how blessed all of us are on this day. We continue with the words of Baruch Hu, which are our call to worship, acknowledging that we have at least a minion in the room. 
-hmm. but we have blessedly so much more than that. Um, and so, as Rabbi Ruth mentioned, this community, these individuals who are going to be, well, you're all right there, I guess, right now. Um, <laughs> these amazing B'nai Mitzvah are going to be our teachers today. And they wanted to be sure that this moment happened in front of all of you as community. So we are grateful for that as we turn to page 108 for the Barahu. Please rise. If it is your custom, you are. you if you'd like to please be seated as I mentioned we'll be learning as, as all of us have mentioned so far we'll be learning from amazing students who have become teachers today and I'm so honored to invite up one of them Adrian Ross to come and teach us a little bit about our morning prayers and what this experience is for all of us thank you so much Adrian I used to think that I was saying the Yotzer Or all wrong. The Yotzer Or is our morning prayer, praising the return of light. But I wasn't saying it when it should be sad, when darkness receded just enough that I could see my hands or a friend's face. Instead, I was saying it when I could say it, when the spouse had left for work, when the kid had left for school, when the cat was fed, when the house was quiet. By then, the morning sun had long since illuminated the sky. So, standing under my attic office's skylight and alongside the peace lilies, I knew I wasn't saying the Yotzer Or at the right time, when the world was still dark, but emerging into the light, into our daily creation, our every morning's ma'ase bereshit. But now, I think I had the time wrong in more ways than one. Like most people who fell asleep in their high school physics class, I thought that the universe began in a big bang, that singular explosive moment of creation. In actuality, the big bang started a process of creation in a still expanding universe, which after eons led to an endless multitude and ongoing creation of planets, suns, and stars. Far wiser minds than mine have seen in that abundant, ever-present energy a reminder of God's words in the Torah's book of Genesis, aka Bereshit, namely, Yehi or Vayachi or let there be light, spoken on the first day of creation. Now, this is a bit confusing, since according to Genesis, the sun, moon, and stars, those celestial timekeepers that cue us into when it's night and when it's day, weren't, were not created until the fourth day of creation. So if I'm understanding this correctly, before there's light in the sky, there's a light in the universe a light in creation itself. Before anything, there's light, and it's the same light 
from the same source. Not a light of dusk and a light of dawn, not a light of night and a light of day, and not a host of gods jostling over each other for control over dusk and dawn, night and day. Instead, there's just one active illuminating presence throughout the universe, including in our small part of creation. Now, understanding the difference between night and day, dark and light, can seem a bit beside the point in the modern world of electric lights. I don't claim to have seen a lot of this world or its light, but I've tracked in the Himalayas and I've backpacked in the wind rivers and along the Washington coast, which means I've been in places where there isn't a switch to flick to bring on the light. In those places, night is dark, really dark. And yet I can't recall a time that there was only darkness in the night. Whether Milky Way or moonlight, there was always some light somewhere in the darkness. And who, having lived through the last few years, can't say they've seen more than enough darkness in the light of day. Perhaps that's something the rabbis of long ago understood when they wrote the Yotzer Or, to praise the one God who creates darkness and light, who makes peace and creates everything, even what's not at all peaceful. Or perhaps it's just human nature that we can't understand day without night, or anything without its opposite. Perhaps those rabbis wrote the Yotzer Or to affirm one God rather than too many gods to keep up with. Or perhaps the rabbis had people like me in mind, people who worry more about when to recite the Yotzer Or than they do about what it's saying. Now I wonder each morning while reciting the Yotzer Or, if the rabbis were trying to remind me of a larger truth, a truth of the light, the energy, the sacred that underlies all our nights, all our days, all our lives. Thank you. Please join me on page 110 for the Yotzer Or. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Yotzer Or Uvorei Hoshek Ose Shalom Uvorei Et Hako Hameir La Aretz Veladarim Alecha Berakamim Utuvo mehadesh bikol yom tamid, maase vereshit, ma rabu maasecha adenai, kulam behokma asita, mala ha aretz kine ya necha, tit barak adenai elohenu, au shavak maase ya decha, va au me ore or she asita. Yafa Arucha Sela, Or Hadash Al Zion Tair, Venis Ke Kulanu Mehera Le Oro, Burukata Arunai, Yotzer Ham Orot. Thank you so much, Adrian. And Thank I you. now am honored to invite up Nathan Addison and Amy Kelman, who are going to continue to lead us as we turn to page 112 for Ahava Rabba. Ahava Rabba Haftanu Adonai Eloheinu Chem la gedola vitera Chamalta aleinu Bavur avoteinu Ve'imoteinu Shebachu vecha, shebachu vecha, avateinu ve'imoteinu. Vatelam dem chuke chaim, kentehonenu utlam denu. Hamrachem, hamrachem, rachem malenu. 
ten belly benu le havin le havinu haskil lishmo alil maru le lamed lishmor velasot ukayemet kodivre Talmud Torah Techa Be'ahava Ve'ha'er Enenu Be'Torah Techa Me'dabek Libenu Be'mitzvot Techa Ve'yached Levavenu Le'ahava U'yira Et Shemecha Ve'lo I'm going to be recruiting you for services coming up, so thank you for leading us so beautifully. Um, and we'll continue now with hearing some words and reflection about the Shema and her blessings from Carrie Stahl. The Shema is one of only two prayers that are specifically commanded in the Talmud. The first part of the Shema begins with one of the best known, most fundamental expressions of Jewish belief, and the one from which this prayer gets its name, Shema Yisrael, hear Israel. The end of that line, the Lord is one, expresses the idea that there's only one God. Growing up, I always knew there was a God, but it was at a surface level. Yes, God created the earth and up in heaven, but that was it. My mom used to say to me, Carrie, God is on your shoulders watching you. But I did not truly understand what that meant. I still remember the day I heard the Shema for the first time. I was at my son Tyler's Oneg Shabbat at SJCS. And they sang the prayer. At that moment, a feeling came over me. I got chills and started to cry. It was such a powerful moment. I felt God was there watching over me and my family. It helped me to understand the bigger picture, that there is something bigger than all of us, something that we cannot see, but we can feel exists to protect us. The Shema is a powerful prayer, one with a lot of meaning in just a few words. The Shema says you should love God with your entire being. A relationship with God is not about what you believe, it is about how you love and listen. There is a powerful force that spreads through the universe that guides the stars in the sky, the wind in the air, 
and all that around us. That one is God. The universal love in everything there is, is one, one God. We remind ourselves every day when we say the Shema that we are connected through that one God. We are so busy in life, we often forget what is happening around us. Like the Shema says, notice. Notice you are surrounded by love, love of others and God's love. Losing my grandmother was the hardest thing that has ever happened to me. Right before my Grammy died, she told me when I see a white butterfly, it is her watching over me. If I had been told that years ago, before hearing the Shema, and having that complete understanding of what it means to have one God, I would have seen a white butterfly and thought nothing of it. Today, there is a white butterfly following me around at my work. I see it in the window of my office to the backyard, and again when I'm leaving every day, it follows me to my car. Many times I tell my friend Nikki, there is my Grammy, and she smiles as it brings tears to my eyes. The Shema is a beautiful prayer. There is a reason we have been praying these words. They are simple, but the ability to reshape one's life. And so we are reminded so beautifully by Carrie to notice, to listen, to love, as we share in these words of Shema together on page 114. If it is your custom and you are able, I invite you to rise. chose to stand, I invite you to be seated after that beautiful transcendent recitation of Shema. Thank you so much, Taran and Noah. We continue with the words of the Vea Hafta, and it is my honor to invite up Corinne Flinger, Flinger and also Jim Dawson to lead us in the Vea Hafta on page 116. The 
You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might, Moses tells the Israelites in the Ve'ahavta. In these verses from Deuteronomy, Moses then proceeds to list a few specific ways in which we are required to show that love, binding them as a sign upon our hand and as a reminder above the eyes, inscribing them on our gates. Of course, these are not the only mitzvot in the Torah, but we can use these particular mitzvot as a basis from which to formulate a more generalized view of our relationship with God. We demonstrate our love for God by following the commandments. The reason I want to speak about this particular prayer this morning is because I'm curious about the nature of the imperative to love God. We are commanded in Ve'ahavta to love God, but how can one be commanded to love? Nahum Sarna, the biblical scholar, indicates that love, as opposed to being the deeply felt internal emotion we conceive it to be today, was, at the time the text was written, understood to be synonymous with loyalty. Ancient Near Eastern political treaties required that vassals love their suzerain, framing that love in terms of loyalty. This is comparable to the love of God demanded of Israel. To quote Sarna, the command to love God accordingly may well be understood as requiring one to act loyalty, loyally to him. To feel love and loyalty for God is one thing, but the Ve'ahavta, as I mentioned moments ago, indicates that there are specific means by which that love must be exhibited. Love must be expressed, made manifest, to achieve its ultimate potential. By doing, we show that we feel love. This can be easy when we feel love for a partner or for a friend or animal. We express our love in words and deeds and the object of our love, hopefully, acknowledges their receipt of that love. This same need to demonstrate our feeling of love applies to our relationship to God. By performing mitzvot, God discerns that we feel love for him. To quote a commentator in Sidur Lev Shalem, love consists of acts of empathy, care, and kindness as well as behavior toward others that is just and righteous. Equally, it may mean that we behave in ways that are pleasing to God, 
acting morally and fulfilling what God desires of us, to walk through life lovingly. What God desires of Jews so that we may walk through life lovingly and be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation is to follow the mitzvot. By that method, we not only work to heal a fractured world, filling as many corners of it as we can with love and goodness, but we also demonstrate the love of God that is so foundational to Judaism. The love we show God by following the mitzvot both reciprocates the love God has shown us by giving us the Torah, and at the same time improves the lives of others in our community and across the globe. Thank you so much, Nathan, for those beautiful words on Vea Hafta. And we'll take that reminder of joy, of love, of fullness and wholeness that we have from that connection to the divine as we enter into the words of Micha Mocha, which can be found on page 122. We can't dance all around the room as we used to, but at home, dance as much as you want. And please, dance in your seats however feels most comfortable and uh, enjoyable to you. so full from that beautiful Micha Mocha. It's my honor to invite up Amy Kelman to offer some reflections as we prepare ourselves for the tefillah, the amidah, the standing prayer, which will happen just after Amy speaks. Like us, our ancestors were far from perfect even the patriarchs and the matriarchs, those we extol in the first blessing of the central prayer of Jewish liturgy, the Avot Ve'imahot. While it may feel comfortable to remember them for their goodness, I think it's imperative that we recognize them in all of their humanity, complex and imperfect, just like us. They deceived, they were desperate, they were devious, they struggled, and they suffered. But they were also patient, kind, wise, hospitable, and tenacious. And miraculously, despite all odds, they managed to be steadfast in their faith in this unnameable and unknowable God. 
They loved their God freely of their own will and without the expectation of favor, unconditionally. And because of that, we are here. Hineni. We are here drawn to the very same oneness of God, uniquely ours, universally ours. Like our ancestors, we seek connection, we search for meaning, we yearn for wholeness, which is beautifully in Hebrew, shalom. We practice, we pray. I wholeheartedly agree with Rabbis Lawrence Kushner and Nehemia Polin, who posit that the source of all prayer is unconditioned, freely given love. I don't think it's coincidental that the root of ahava, the Hebrew word for love, is hava, which means to give. It's widely understood that the Avot Ve'imahot connects us as links in a chain all the way back to Abraham and Sarah. The blessing reminds us that we all have our own experience with God. However, I believe that the Avot Ve'imahot also invokes our mothers, fathers, and ancestors for more profound reasons. Parents are, after all, those first poised to teach us that we are created out of God's love in a pattern never to be repeated and that we are worthy of unconditional love. However, being imperfect as we all are, we parents sometimes miss the mark. Even such revered ones as the patriarchs and matriarchs. Given this reality, I think we must embrace the Avot's explicit declaration that God creates everything out of love. Human beings are love, all of us. I believe we must strive to love unconditionally, ourselves, our children, our parents, our fellow humans. This precious yet abundant resource is within us all right here, right now. Our capacity for love is boundless, infinite, and self-renewing, and it matters. The Avot Ve'imahot is clear on this. Love endures, God remembers. I believe that love is the connection between us all, the oneness of God. We are connected to each other, connected to the earth, and connected to all that came before us and all that is to come. Love binds us together across generations, across space and time. Let us all endeavor to move toward the source of all prayer, unconditional love. We must let go of judgment and expectation and move towards acceptance and grace. Let us endeavor to love ourselves and our fellow humans and in turn, love God, wholly, freely, and unconditionally. Not because we are perfect, but because we are imperfect. And so now I invite up Carrie Stahl and Eve Siegel as they lead us in the Amidah, our standing prayer, which can be found starting on page 124. I invite you to rise if you are able, and it is your custom. Adonai Sephatai Tiftak Ufiyag Yitzahilatecha Adonai, open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu, Elohei Avotenu ve'imotenu, Elohei Avraham, Elohei Yitzhak, Elohei Yaakov, Elohei Sarah, Elohei Rivka, Elohei Rachel, Elohei Leah. Ha el hagadol hagibor vahanora el el yom gomel hasadim tovim 
Vekone ha kovizo per hase avot bimahot ume vei ge ula libne venehem lema anshemo be ahava melekozer umoshia umagen barukata adonai magen avraham be ezra sara. Ata yibor le'olam Adonai Mechaye ha'kol atara la'hoshia Mashiv ha'ruach u'morib ha'gashem Mechaye ha'kim be'chesed Mechaye ha'kol be'rachamim rabim So mek no klim ve'rofe cholim Uma tira surim, uma yem nato lishene afak lichamo chaba agevu rot umido mela melek memi umcha mi agesua vene ema atala leho hako barukata adonai mekaye hako yasha kohachen beautiful we remain standing as we turn to page 130 for the kudusha Nekadesh et shimcha ba'olam Keshem shemakdishim o'to bishmei marom Kakatuv al yad neviecha Vekara ze el ze ve'amar Kadosh, kadosh, kadosh Adonai As Rabbi Dana said, it's the standing prayer, but because we have a special teaching by Corinne, I'm going to invite you all to please be seated. Tifalat HaLev, translated as prayer from the heart, is the last prayer section of the Amidah reserved for silent,
personal meditation or communication with God. The early rabbis viewed this section of the service as a time for each person to choose their own words of individualized prayer to balance the communal nature of most of the fixed liturgy. Elohai Nitzor is included in this section of our prayer book, but it is not usually read or spoken aloud. As a result, it is less familiar than many of the prayers in the Amidah. Here is the English translation of the first three lines of Elohai Nitzor. My God, guard my speech from evil and my lips from deception. Before those who slander me, I will hold my tongue. I will practice humility. Open my heart to your Torah that I may pursue your mitzvot. Written by Mar Bar Ravina in the 4th century CE and included in a section of the Talmud which contains several personal prayers of Talmudic sages, Elohai Nitzor has been in all prayer books since the 9th century CE. Its uniqueness results from being written in the first person singular rather than in the plural, which emphasizes the personal nature of this communication with God. Although Rabbi Lawrence Hoffman dismissed this prayer as, quote, a fitting meditation for people who had nothing that they wanted to say on their own, I have found it to be a prayer that speaks deeply to uh, my deeply felt wish to become my best self. For many of us, spoken and written words form the basis of our communication. Electronic communication has only increased opportunities for misinterpretation and careless statements, as it can be quickly sent into the world without careful consideration, lacking nuance of body language, face-to-face -face interaction, and opportunities for clarification and discussion. Elohai Nitzor reminds us of the importance of mindful speech and action. Mindfulness emphasizes the pause that allows space for thoughtful response so that our speech is neither glib, thoughtless, unnecessary, unwise, nor unkind. Mindfulness of action encourages us to speak up and act on behalf of others or ourselves when necessary. The words, my God, guard my speech from evil and my lips from deception, remind us of the power our words have to harm or to help and to have impacts which can last for many years, contributing to estrangement, loneliness, and psychological trauma or alternatively, to connection, positive self-image, and goodwill. Sometimes, despite our best efforts, our speech may harm others, hopefully without intent. Reducing the harm and hurt that our words have caused often requires difficult conversations as we listen with open, with open heart to try to understand, communicate, apologize, and make amends. Likewise, if we have been harmed by the words of another, we must try to communicate with them so as not to hold anger and hurt in our own hearts, which can spill out at unexpected times to impact others. In my extended family, as in many families, the strands of communication and connection have sometimes been stretched and occasionally disrupted and only sometimes rewoven and reconnected. While we may not have acquired the requisite skills and insights for good communication when we were younger, I believe that we can change how we interact in the world at any age. Many authors have used the ideas of Elohai Nitzor to create accessible guidance to improve communication. For example, an aphorism familiar to many of us paraphrases Bernard Meltzer, a 20th century radio host who wrote, Before you speak, 
Ask yourself if what you are going to say is true, is kind, is necessary, is helpful. If the answer is no, maybe what you are about to say should be left unsaid. For me, using the ideas of Elohai Nitzor encourages me in my goal of mindful speech and action, working towards being more aware, thoughtful, and kind to keep the strands of communication connected. And we'll take a few moments in silence and come out actually listening to the words of this beautiful prayer that Corinne just taught us about uh, with uh, voices from our, uh, our professionals. the <laughs> 
I think uh, now we understand why it's a prayer that moved you so, Corinne. And so we find ourselves at the Seder Kriyat HaTorah, the service for reading Torah. And it is at this moment when a person finds themselves in the chain of tradition that precedes them. Ordinarily, uh, we have this moment when we take Torah from the Ark and we share it with the community who is gathered, whether online or here. Um, ordinarily, that's a time for um, your conventional B'nai Mitzvah student to receive Torah from uh, the hands of their parents. Um, but we always make sure that we have a blessing from the community because we believe at Temple Beth Am that this passing of Torah doesn't just happen within families, but it happens as whole communities, generation to generation to generation. Um, and so the passing down of Torah for this particular service for reading Torah will be very um, focused on that uh, communal joy that we experience. And so um, to offer words of blessing to our adult B'nai Mitzvah cohort on behalf of our congregation, it is an honor to invite our president, Ben Gladstein, to come forward. Or our president-to-be, Greg Berkman, to come forward. He is not Ben Gladstein, but he plays him on TV. <laughs> what did they say? One heartbeat away, right? <laughs> uh, hopefully he's just in the restroom. But, um, <laughs> so you'll say these words right here, Greg, and no other words, please. <laughs> right. <laughs> you have no idea what you're in for. We thank God for the gift of Torah and for the wondrous opportunity to share it with a new generation. Today you ensure the con continuation of the legacy of Moses and Miriam who first taught Torah to our people. As we prepare to hand the Torah to you now, it is our hope that just as you will carry it in your hands today, you will carry it within your hearts always as a perpetual expression of faith in God and commitment to your people. Amen. And so this was... <laughs> Don't they look like they were, you know, separated at birth? <laughs> Can't rehearse this. <laughs> so actually, gentlemen, um, we'll be calling you up in just a moment, but stay here because as long as you're here, we would love for both of you to open up the ark as we continue now with our service for reading Torah. You can uh, find the blessings on page 246. If um, uh, you are able, please rise or rise in spirit and B'nai Mitzvah class, if you choose to, we would love for you to come up and receive Torah from the hands of our rabbis. in our adult B'nai Mitzvah cohort of 5782, each of you has come to this moment taking your own path. Each of you have ancestors behind you who have urged you to this moment. Each of you has a community before you who embraces and supports and is blessed by you. Every time we share Torah, we are at Mount Sinai 
And this morning on this Shabbat, because of each of you and the Torah that is in your soul, we get to have that moment of con continuity with God and with love that our ancestors passed on to us and that by taking hold of today, we pass on to the future. Thank you for giving us this sacred moment as we continue now remembering Ki Mitzion because out of our homeland came Torah. Ki Mitzion us just one moment if you'll bring that oh, back okay. and the name it's for students you may have your uh, seat and once the ark is closed we'll sit down okay please be seated and so in this moment of uh, sharing Torah. It is an honor to invite. I promise you, even though uh, I know we, the time is late, but we actually have just a few more teachings. Uh, uh, the liturgy was uh, it, it made especially um, spiritual for me this morning by hearing all of the different words, but it is more usual, more conventional to hear words of Torah. As I mentioned at the start of services, this week's uh, Torah portion could not be more perfect. It's Vayish Lach. It is about the time when um, uh, Jacob is about to reunite with his brother Esau after 20 years of rivalry. And he has a very interesting experience uh, at night by a riverside with a being. And so we'll hear from three of our students about this of our Torah, two prior to hearing the words of Torah themselves. And so it is an honor to invite up for first Jim and then Eve to share their Dibre Torah. There's the cliche that says, winners never quit and quitters never win. In this Torah portion, Jacob never stops looking for a way to mend his relationship with his brother Esau. In Vaishlach, Jacob, on his way to meet up with his long lost twin, sends a message of reconciliation, hoping to please his brother. He instructs his men to tell Esau that he has done all right for himself, working for his father-in-law, Levon. In fact, he has been something of a con man. When his men return, they report that Esau is on his way with 400 men. Esau seems to have held a grudge, and it's time for Jacob to face the music. Some might have turned tail and run, but Jacob decides to trust in God. 
It is to his credit that he admits that he is unworthy of all that he has gained since the time he crossed the Jordan with nothing but his walking stick. He takes assurance, reassurance from God's instruction to return to his native land. He remembers God's promise that things will go well with him. He prays that he will be saved from Esau's hand. But instead of just trusting God, he divides his people, his flocks, and his herds into two camps and resigns himself to the possibility of losing one of them. He also prepares a rather sizable gift, actually several gifts in succession, to appease Esau before the fateful reunion. Jacob crosses a river with his wives, maid servants, and children. Then he goes back and sends everything he owns ahead of him. He is now separated from everything that is or was his. He is alone. Along comes a mysterious figure who wrestles with him until the sun begins to rise. And there's more mystery. The text does not describe the action. It does not say whether Jacob was the clear winner or whether it was a sort of stalemate. All we are told is that Jacob's opponent saw that he could not overcome Jacob and that he struck Jacob's hip socket. While wrestling is a combat sport, the object is to subdue one's opponent without actually injuring them. Had there been a referee, the mysterious figure would have been disqualified. Thus, Jacob was the winner, even though it is not clear that he did anything more than hold his own, although he clearly had a controlling hold, not allowing the other to leave. Eventually, Jacob agrees to let the mysterious being go in return for a blessing. After refusing to give his name, the mysterious being then took his leave of him. According to Plout's commentary, took his leave might also be translated blessed. I believe this is what it meant. Maybe that blessing was worth the injury that Jacob received. I also believe that if you are up against an unbeatable opponent, a draw can be a moral victory. In my own life, I've struggled with my own unbeatable opponent, a bipolar disorder. A large part of the struggle was simply accepting that there is no cure. There is reason to believe that we would not want to rad eradicate the illness if we could. In some ways, it comes with a blessing. It is well known that bipolar disorder often goes hand in hand with creativity, particularly writing and poetry. It also causes the body to need less sleep, which means you have more hours in which to be creative. God creates, so the ability to create is part of being created in the image of God. This week in Vaishlak, we find ourselves amid sibling disputes. Jacob has been away from his home for over two decades, separated from his brother after a significant conflict. We find Jacob on his way home to reunite with his family, but the journey is full of trepidation and anxiety. Jacob remains fearful of his brother and anticipates that their conflict will remain on the forefront of his memory. On the eve of his reunion, Jacob encounters a stranger and wrestles him throughout the night. He fights fiercely until dawn when the stranger demands Jacob to release him. However, Jacob, ever the clever and contemplative brother, insists on a blessing before releasing the stranger. At this moment, he will no longer be known as Jacob, but Israel, because he has struggled with the divine and humanity and is ultimately victorious. Dawn arrives and Jacob approaches Esau. The two brothers have a humble encounter and Jacob is received warmly. Jacob, now wearing his new identity as Israel, divorces himself from the patterns of his youth and can now forge a new identity. In March of 2020, I found myself with 500 others staring at the soft light of a laptop waiting for a Zoom to start. The Zoom was hosted by prominent OB-GYNs of University of Washington, 
and the topic on the agenda was pregnancy in the pandemic. Babies are born all the time, even in pandemics. And for some, this might be the right time for you to embark on pregnancy, and we are here to support you. Like Jacob, there was a fear in the unknown. There was this undertone of anxiety on how to prepare yourself for every outcome, every possibility. So despite this uncertainty swirling, my husband and I made the decision to go ahead with our pregnancy plans. Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with beings divine and human, and you have prevailed. This section of the Parsha is fascinating. It is a stark difference to Abraham. When God changed Abram's name to Abraham, it was an entirely new name, which signaled this complete change of character, a new person. However, scholars suggest that your name will no longer be called Jacob could mean your name will no longer only be called Jacob. By not abandoning his own name, Jacob instead grows into a new name of Israel. And in doing so, his identity grows, encompassing all the touchstones of what make us human, that is, what we have been and what we are growing to be. Furthermore, the name Israel might reflect more than one meaning. It could mean one that is triumphant in battle, which is critical in order to become a nation, or perhaps the name Israel could be defined as the ability to engage head-on in battle. But despite this elevated title, Jacob still retains his birth name and therefore retains his passive sensibilities, which may also be the proper way of maintaining the state of Israel. My given name is Eve, but I am also called by others. Sister, daughter, aunt, wife. All of these names have shaped me and how I interact and engage with others. At the inconvenient hour of 5.53 a.m. in June, <laughs> I instantly gave birth to two new identities. One weighed about seven pounds and had a really healthy set of lugs. The other was within me. To inherit the new name of mother is also to inherit one with an enormous job description. One with many preconceived expectations and the fear that any mistake could cause irrefutable harm. Like the name Israel, the definition of what is a successful mother is varied and highly individualized. But like Jacob, I retain my old name and with that, my history and experiences to the part. The Midrash states that a person has three names, one that is given by their father and mother, one that people know them by, and one that they acquire for themselves. Through this major life event, I have found this teaching to be true. As I step on my new path with the name Mother in tow, I find myself imagining what Jacob felt like with his new elevated name. Empowered, nervous, humbled, transformed. After all, the names we give ourselves may be the loftiest and most dynamic of them all. To me, when I inherited the name Mother, it required me to shift my focus and priorities. And the role of Mother demanded I create a nurturing, loving environment. Similarly, I hope the same for my child. I want my daughter to grow into more than just the role of daughter, but into her own name, and with that, all the beautiful qualities that will transcend into the names she acquires throughout her life. Yasha Koach. And as I like to say to Eve, not only did she do everything that all the other B'nai Mitzvah students did, but she gestated and created a human being at the same time. And so mazel tov to you. Thank you, Rabbi Jason. So we are actually going to hear these words of Torah now from um, our uh, uh, incredible B'nai Mitzvah cohort. If you'd like to follow along, um, uh, you can follow along the the group as a whole will be reading from chapter 32 of the book of Genesis, starting with verse 4 and going all the way to verse 30. And the way we're going to do this, uh, in part to keep it COVID safe and 
in part to uh, uh, give everyone an opportunity. We're going to do this in two aliot. Um, and I, I am grateful that Debbie will uh, stand as Gabbai and Rabbi Dana will call each of our folks. Again, if you're uh, wanting to follow along, we're going to start with chapter 32 of Vayishlach, verse 4. And it is an honor for the first Aliyah to call forward Amy, Adrian, Nathan, and Carrie. Ha kol havu godel Eloheinu, utenu kavod le Torah. Ya amdu ha b'nei mitzvah, os nat peshe adele fegle ve natan ve libaziban le Aliyah rishona. Baruch Adonai Hamborach Leolam Vaed. Baruch Adonai Hamborach Leolam Vaed. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam. Asher Baharbanu Miko Haamim. Venatam Lanu Et Torato. Baruch Adonai Notein HaTorah. Amen. Vaishla Yaakov Malahim Le. Just start over. Vaishla Yaakov Malahim Lefanov El Esav Ahiv Artsa Seir Sede Edom. Vaitzav o tam lemor ko tom run la doni la esav ko amar avdeha yakov im levan garti va ehar ad ata. Vayahi li shor vahamor tzon ve'eved v'shifha va'eshleha lehagid ladoni limsohen ve'eneha. Yashua. Vayashivu hamelakim el Yaakov lemor vanu el ahiha el esahav vegam halehek likracha vearba meot ish imo vayira Yaakov meohod vayetzelo vayahat. Et ha am a sherry toe, et hat so on, et ha bakar, va hagmalim, lishne mahanot, va ayomer imiavo esav, el hamahane, ha 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 Yasha Koach. <laughs> Vayomer Yaakov Elohe Avi Abraham Velohe Avi Yitzchak Adonai Haomer Eli Shuv l'artzcha ulmoladetcha ve'etiva imach katonti mikol hachasadim u'mikol ha'emet asher asita et avdecha ki b'makli avarti et hayarden hazeh 
ve'ata hayiti lishne machanot hatzileni na miyad achi miyad esav ki yare anochi oto penyavo vehikani em albanim. Yasha Koach, and last but not least, Kerry. Ve'ata amarta hetev ehiv imak v'samtit et zaracha kehol hayom asher lo yisafer merov v'yalin sham v'alay l'achahuv v'yikach min ha'bat v'yadon Mincha le esav achiv. Izim matayim utyashim asrim rekalim matayim ve'elim esrim. Yashakoa. And if you all will just come a little closer and do the blessing after. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher natan lanu torat emet, vehaye olam nata etokenu, baruch ata adonai, noten ha torah. Amen. And we say Yasher Koach to each and every one. I'd like to invite the remainder of our class to come forward. They will pick up at uh, verse 16. And Rabbi Dana will call them with the official call. I call her who go down and are hey, who to new cover on the Torah. Yeah, I'm do hub name it's far. Elana, Vermita, Vehaba, Vehaim, Le, Aliashnia. Baruch et Adonai Hambora. Baruch Adonai Hambora, Leolam, Vaed. Amen. The Amarta. Le Avdecha Le Yaakov Mincha I Shalucha La Doni Le Esav Ve Hine Gam Hu 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 Acharenu Vayitzav Gam Et Hasheni Gam Et Hashlishi Gam Et kol ha hohim, achare ha adarim lemor, kadavar ha ze, tidabrun el esav, bemotza achem oto, va amartem gam hine. Avdecha Yaakov Acharenu Ki Amar Achapera Fanav Bamincha Aholechet Lefanai Veacharehen Erev Fanav Ulai Yisa Fanai The Amarta, Le Avdecha, Le Yaakov, Mincha, I Shalucha, La Doni, Le Esav, Ve Hine Gam Hu Hu Hu, Acharenu, Vayitzav, Gam Et Hashani, Gam Et Hashlishi, Gam 
et kol ha-hohim, achare ha-adarim lemor, kadavar hazeh, kedabrun el esav, bemotza achem oto. Va'amartem gam hine avdecha Yaakov acharenu ki amar achapera fanav bamincha aholechet lefanai ve'acharehen. Erefanav ulai yisafanai. Vataavor hamiha alpenav vehu lan belayla hahu vamachane. Vayakam Valila Hu Vayika Eshte Nansham Veshte Shifotav Ve et Achad Asar Yuladav Vaya Avor Et Maaver Yabok Vayikol Hem Vaya Avirem Et Hanahal Vaya Aver Et Asher Lo Vayomer Elav Mashem Echav Vayomer Yaakov Vayomer Lo Yaakov Vayomer Od Shimcha Ki Im Yisrael Ki Savita Im Elohim Ve'im Anashim Betuchav Vaishal Yaakov, Vayomer Hagidana Shemecha, Vayomer Lamaze Tishal Lishmi, Ot Vivarek Oto Shah. Asher Natamanu Torah Emet Vekayu Ulam Natan Betokeyu Baruch Atah Adonai Vatein HaTorah Amen And you all can have a seat. Still in front of us to add a prayer for healing. Healing of minds, body, or spirit. As the Torah has been with us throughout the generations, we are here for each other, to help comfort and support one another. We mention all those who are still struggling and battling this pandemic, and are grateful to all those healthcare workers and central workers who have kept our community going. We think of all those who struggle every day, unnecessarily and horribly with hatred and discrimination, simply for being who they are, whom they love, the color of their skin, how they pray, where they are from. We also add the names of loved ones in our own lives. We seek to add to this prayer of healing and this prayer of support. Those of you joining online, please add names to the chat. And those of you joining in person, you're welcome to share names out loud at this time. We join together in Misha Berach the Cholim, found on page 253.
conclude our Torah service on page 252 as the Torah is lifted and dressed. And we'll make a quick transition to then 256 as we return the Torah to the ark. If it is your tradition and you are able, please rise as the Torah is lifted, dressed, and returned. Please be seated. We continue with our Haftarah, a reading from the prophets that accompanies this week's Torah portion. Now, some weeks, there is always a connection between the Torah and the Haftarah portion. Some of it is a bit more obvious, some of it a bit more vague. This week is quite obvious, as the prophet Hosea, who prophesied in the northern kingdom of Israel, is trying to encourage and remind the people of what has transpired in the past to help them with the current struggles of their day. And he directly relates the story of Jacob and Esau from their battles as, a young, as young twins to what we read today, their reunification, and most importantly, the moment of wrestling and re-identity. We'll be reading the Haft Torah today. You can follow along in your prayer books. The blessings are on page 254 your prayer books or your flip books. And you can follow along with the reading itself if you choose to use Safaria, if you have a tablet or you're online, or if you're in person, we'll be reading in total Hosea chapter 11, verse seven, through chapter 12, verse 13. And I'd like to welcome up Nathan, Corinne, Jim, Eve, and Carrie, who will open our Haftarah reading with a blessing before. And we thank Debbie again for being our Gabbai. The Amit Eluim, Lim Shuvati, the El Al Yigrohu, Yahad, Lo Yeromem, Ech, Etencha Ephraim, Amagencha Yisrael, Ech, Etencha Ehadma, 
to continue our reading. Va'adonai Elohei Hatzevaot Adonai Zichro Ve'ata Bello heha tashu he said umish pat shemur vekave el elo heha ta ta me die vaiv rock ya a co said Vaya avod Israel, be isha, uvisha, shamar. 
And then we'll do the blessing well, after. And let's say a really loud amen to that. Amen. amen. I'm going to invite the remaining uh, adult B'nai Mitzvah cohort to come up. And everyone, if you'll just stand in a line in um, front of the ark. Um, and the reason why you gave that amen with so much ruach, with so much spirit, is because uh, that was the final task in, until we get to Kiddush and Motzi for this remarkable group of um, teachers. Last night, Rabbi Jason looked at this group and said, they grow up so fast. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm getting uh, mileage on his joke, so thank you, <laughs> Rabbi Jason. Um, and, uh, and we have joked that today they are truly adults, but really, <laughs> Today, each of you um, is a teacher of Torah, <coughs> not just the Torah that you shared, uh, that you wrestled with intellectually, or the Torah that comes out so beautifully from the chanting of your mouth, but the Torah of your heart. And you have each been to us an inspiration. And so it is our incredible, incredible good luck to offer words of blessing to all of you who have been um, a font of blessing to all of us on this morning. As Rabbi Ruth mentions, when the Torah enters our community, it's as if we're standing at Sinai itself. And that tradition of Sinai has continued. As it says in Pirkei Avot 1.1 that Moses received the Torah at Sinai and passed it down from one generation to the next. To Moses, to Joshua, the prophets, the community, to the people. And today we have passed on this Torah and an unbroken line to you, our adult and mitzvah class of 5782. You re represent the next link in our tradition, the values, our heritage, and the continuation of our people, and the strength that we have yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and the blessings you all bring to our community. Together we will offer over all of you the three-part blessing of the priestly benediction, one of the oldest texts, let alone one of the oldest blessings in all of Jewish tradition. So we hope it may guide you, share light upon you, and give you strength as you go forward into this world. <laughs> May God bless and keep each one of you. Ya er Adonai panavelecha vichunecha. And as each of you, to see your face in the words of Torah is to see the face of God. And as the light of God shines forth from you, may it continue to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Yisa Adonai panavelecha. May God's presence be with you each moment of your lives, the journey you have been on and the journey still ahead. And with each moment, each step, each, each milestone and marker ahead, may God be with you and always grant you peace. And, and let us say with a lot of ruach, 
Amen. May you grow from strength to strength and joy to joy and blessing to blessing. We're going to be calling you up again in just a little while, but meanwhile, you can go and have a seat and you can actually take a nice deep breath, one and all. It is important on Shabbat, even amidst our joy and celebration, as we remember the journeys ahead and the people, the generations past, that we honor that from which we've came. We honor memory. We honor those we have loved and those we have lost. With the words of Mourner's Kaddish found on page 294. We in our community this week are in the seven days of mourning for Gerald Katz, brother of Larry, brother-in-law of Diana, uncle of Jesse and Ethan. When the peer of the Shloshim, the 30 days of mourning for Lee Broadwin, father of Elliot, father-in-law of Christina. And we, our community and many communities around the world are observing Transgender Day of Remembrance, honoring all those whose lives have been taken or taken from them for simply trying to be who they are in society that keeps holding them back. We observe the yard site's the anniversary of passing of Audrey Ben Ezra, Pamela Bennett, Arthur Bobroff, Eunice Fleischer, Sarah Fisher, Natalie Gendler, Ruth Ginsler, Sherman Grossman, Jacob Kaufman, Rose Comissaro, Edward Kotler, Eugene LaBeouf, Victoria Levinson, Sam Levinson, Eric Meyer, Celia Raphael, Jacob Rubinsky, Elsie Savage, Alexandra Schwartzreich, Rachel Shipper, Morris Smith, Elaine Stoller. If there are names of loved ones you are remembering on this Shabbat, we invite you to add them to the chat or to share them out loud at this time. If you're in the first seven days of mourning, you're welcome to rise. If you're in the first 30 days of mourning, you're welcome to rise. If you're in the first year of mourning, you're welcome to rise. If you're observing a yard site, you're welcome to rise. If it is your tradition to rise in love and solidarity, we welcome you to do so, as the Mourner's Kaddish is found on page 294. Yitkadal the Yitkadash Shame Raba Yimrad vi Rah Pirute Viam Lich Mahute Vahayechon Vyomechon Uvhaye Duho Beit Yisrael Baagala Uvizman Kari Vimru Amem Yehe Shme Raba Mevarah Alam Ome Omaya Yit Barach for Yishtabach for Yit Paar Vit Roman Viet Nase Vietadar Vietale Vietalal Shame du Kudasha Barihu Veela mean ko Birhata Vashirata Tushbahata Venechamata Da Miram Velma the Imru Amen Yehe Shlama Raba mean Shemaya Vichayim Aleno Vel Kol Yisrael Vimru, Amen. O se shalom vimramav. Hu ya se shalom. Aleno ve al kol Yisrael ve al kol Yoshve Tevel. Vimru, Amen. Amen. Yoshve Tevel, all who dwell on this earth. Please be seated. And just a few quick words of thank you. Uh, first and uh, foremost, thank you to uh, Noah and to Tarin for bringing such beautiful music to our our space. Thank you to t um, 
to uh, Ronnie and to Toby for being our Shamashim, and we can show our gratitude to them by bringing our prayer books back to the cart afterwards. Thank you to our incredible staff who have done so much to be able to bring uh, this uh, Delta the Name Mitzvah experience to our teachers and our leaders. Um, and in particular, uh, we are so excited that today it, we're able to celebrate this incredible Simcha with lunch. And so um, please uh, feel free to stay. We'll be doing that in a COVID safe way. Um, and from here on in, when we celebrate B'nai Mitzvah up here on the Bima, we'll be uh, also celebrating afterwards with a Kiddush lunch. And at this time, just to make sure that we're being responsible with our food consumption as we're doing this in a COVID safe way, we are asking if you uh, choose to come to lunch moving forward, not today, uh, that you'll RSVP. Uh, so uh, a really a great amount of gratitude uh, to our incredible team. Uh, and to Brendan and Jamie, who are hidden behind the tech file, of course, to uh, Debbie Maserano, to my rabbinic colleagues, but most of all, uh, the thank yous that we have uh, are to each and every one of you, our incredible adult B'nai Mitzvah cohort, who stood through this, as uh, Debbie mentioned, really persevered moment by moment by moment, and today, we have, in this week before we move into Thanksgiving, we have so much gratitude to all of you. Uh, uh, just a side note that next week for Thanksgiving, our services will be completely on Zoom, so our facilities team um, can also get a holiday weekend. <laughs> so, so a huge amount of gratitude to all of you. I'd like to invite uh, um, uh, both uh, Ben Gladstein and Greg Berkman, who plays Ben Gladstein on TV, <laughs> to please uh, join us, uh, our president, and, um, and we, we are hoping our next president to join us. I'd also like to invite the um, entire class to come on forward, because you would like to offer a few gifts. Yes. Yes. It, I will say, if, if I seem... If I seem rusty at this, it's only because I am. Um, <laughs> this is my first Saturday morning back in the building, and I'm honored to be here with all of you. This was, this was amazing. Your, as Rabbi Ruth said, your perseverance and your excellence was really, uh, is, is really inspirational. So on behalf of the Temple Beth Olam Board of Directors, as the president, and Greg as our vice president, would like to present you with these gifts. This includes a certificate that makes it official, capital O, official, <laughs> uh, as well as a challah cover for your continued um, celebration. So, Corinne, okay. Shakoa, uh, Adrian, <laughs> right there. <laughs> Let's just toss it to everyone. <laughs> and Rabbi Jason, you can somehow, we'll keep you all up here. Harry is right Harry here. <laughs> <laughs> we did it. And thank you, Ben. Thank you, Greg. And we'll ask our class to lead us in two more blessings or blessings for Kiddush, blessing the sanctity of our Shabbat, and blessing a motzi as we will break bread together. So as the Kiddush cups are being passed out. If you'd like to follow along, pages 301 and 302. Once everyone has a glass, our class will lead us in the words of Key Douche. We ready? And also, we break bread as community with the words of Motsi, and one of you will help us make it a kosher blessing by having a bite. But for them now, Here, together we say the words of Motsi. I just uh, voluntold Nathan, he will Excellent. be representing <laughs> to make it a kosher challah. 
and you just need to take yeah. a bite because you'll be the only one to touch this. Yeah. And so, uh, Travis, you got some challah French toast coming your way. <laughs> and we close this beautiful morning, this gorgeous Shabbat, this inspiring day with the words of Osei Shalom, which can be found on page 253. Yes. Osei Shalom our friends online, loved ones of the B'nai Mitzvah class. We're going to stay up here for three minutes, so if you want to take a photograph of this amazing Simcha moment, please do so. Everyone else, we 